And we're back, and it's time for Thursday Night Football. San Francisco is at Seattle. Stat of the game, Geno Smith has 33 to 39 pass attempts in six straight Mm -hmm. games, 23.1 or more fantasy points in six straight games. That is awesome. There have been nine quarterbacks with 33 or more pass attempts against the 49ers, and Patrick Mahomes is the only one that scored more than 17 fantasy points. Uh, The other good ones... You know, respectable ones would be Stafford twice, eh, whatever. Uh, Herbert, Tua, Brady. Those guys sucked against the Niners, even with that pass volume. Start or sit Geno Smith this week? I'm as a sit. I'm very, very nervous about the matchup, nervous about the upside. He's he's been awesome. I think if if you can't get your hands on Mike White or Aaron Rodgers or even Trevor Lawrence, if he miraculously is out there in your league, I think you just roll with Geno and you hope that he puts it all together. He's also on top of all the stats that you said about his past six games, he's seen more pressure in those past six games. Uh, I want to say the pressure rate is right around 33 percent and he's been fine. Obviously, the numbers have been good. But this is just this is a great defense. They're going to get after him very quickly, and I am nervous that he will be able to keep it up. Yeah, I've I've moved him down to ninth, but he's still probably going to be a start for me. Um, there's just not like we said we've we've like I would start Justin Fields and Trevor Lawrence and those guys over him, but and he's been mostly better than those guys recently. Um, but the the matchup does scare me enough that a low end starter. You know, Smith has finished top 12 in nine of 13 weeks, top eight in, I think, six of 13 weeks. One, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah. And we're going to start Mike White over him. I can't. I am not. Oh, boy, Dave, you would really do that? Uh, That's where I have it right now because the Lions pass defense is so bad. It is. Uh, the other thing is Smith has been great basically all year, right from the right out of the gate. I mean, week one, he had a good game against the Broncos. Yeah, solid mm-hmm. game. His only really bad game, I think, maybe he has two, but his only stinker was the Niners. It was week two, and he was horrible. But that was at San Francisco. Yeah. And, and that was earlier mostly. in the year when he wasn't throwing as much. Mm-hmm. That's so, fair. Um, yeah, I mean, I don't think it's going to be a great game, but I think he can get you to 20. Uh, all right, Christian McCaffrey or Travis Homer this week? I'm gonna go Homer. Of call. <laughs> all right, well, what if Ken Walker plays? We've, we we're ranking him now. Okay, so where are you ranking him? Thirty. It's a good question. I haven't I haven't <laughs> ranked him yet, but it's probably it's gonna be low. Yeah, man. It's just I think I think you know the deal. It's arguably the best run defense in football, and and they've been struggling to run the ball anyway. Uh, Metcalf and Lockett. All systems go. I'm I don't see them. how you sit them. Right. Okay. Lockett has the second most touchdown catches from 30 or more yards out behind only Devontae Adams. That does make me a little nervous. I, I wonder how he ranks on that stat since he came into the league. Yeah, that's a good point. He's a, that, that, I mean, obviously he does that. Um, the question is, you know, do the Niners give up those types of plays? And they, they do now. I mean, you think about, I think... DeAndre Carter a couple weeks ago. Trent well, I've got the stats right here. I do too, but I mean they they do they are a little susceptible to the big play, more so the second half of the season than the first half. All right, so look, it's we've talked about guys like Cooper and Watson, like tough calls. Just start right, your Seattle. Yeah, start your Seattle receivers. Uh sit Noah Fant. Let's go to the Brock. Let's go to Brock Purdy here. So how do you feel about Brock Purdy? Um Try to, I'll, get, I'll get his roster percentage. How do you feel about Brock Purdy, Dave? I think he's a number two fantasy quarterback this week. Would be excited to use him as a second quarterback in a super flex. Would be unexcited to use him as my one QB guy. He's looked okay. He's he's actually done a great job of navigating the pocket, avoiding pressure. He's made some big time throws, but he's the majority of his throws have been very very short throws. Here's an example. Five of his 67 pass attempts and two of his 45 completions have been on passes of 15 or more air yards. His ADOT is 5.3. That ranks 32nd among qualifying quarterbacks over the past two weeks. Sam Darnold is the only one who's lower. So I I think in order for him to have a great fantasy game, 
You need volume. He's not going to get volume. 49ers are going to be able to run the ball quite well. And so I'm maybe I even have him ranked a little too high. I've got him at 17, thinking that he could be in for like 175 yards and maybe two touchdowns. Heath, uh, one thing about that dot, yeah, he's throwing the ball really short. This is not a terrible matchup to do that. The Seahawks are the, mm-hmm. the worst true. yak team. They give up the second most yak per catch. Uh, when these two teams played in week two, the 49ers averaged 7.3 yards after the catch per catch, and that was the most in the NFL that week. So you got the best yak team basically every year, the Niners, and then the, the Seahawks are kind of the worst in that, but you don't have Debo, and Debo is – the yak king that stat um so what do you think about him heath brock purdy and who would you start him over who would who's ahead of him where where is he in the rankings he's like 20 for me and i feel like that's too high i am like and i just like i'm worried about the 49ers going into seattle for a night game the 12s are going to be just insane a must-win game for the seahawks i think purdy could turn into a pumpkin he's been he's been pretty good so far but He's also just like used his yak kings. He still has Christian McCaffrey. Um, I don't want to start him. Yeah. Uh, they are the most resilient team. You know, it's unbelievable. The injuries they sustain and the success that they have. Uh, amazing. I am very, really excited for this game because yeah, the atmosphere is going to be terrific. All right. McCaffrey is the best. Brandon Ayuk, guys. So where is Ayuk compared to Mari Cooper? And Christian Watson, and you know, then Michael Pittman. What do you think about Ayuk? Behind He's in that mix for me. Why is he behind all of them, Heath? I I just don't think he's not the Yak King, and I don't expect Purdy to have a lot of success throwing the ball down the field. And his good performance last week was two catches for fifty-seven yards and a touchdown. Yeah, he he, he got a touchdown. But I, I, and I mean, we we have this discussion every single week. I don't think that makes him more likely to score a touchdown this week because he scored a touchdown last week. But are you giving him any boost without Debo Samuel? This yeah, is, yeah, Debo he would have been. Cl- yeah, he got the targets. He, he'd have been closer to wide receiver forty if Debo Samuel was playing. So he he may not be the yak king, but he actually ranks fifteenth among wide receivers with five point three six yards after catch per reception this year. And I know that we think about Ayuk as a downfield receiver. Uh, I did the work on this. 68 of his 86 targets have come from inside of 15 air yards. He's caught 78% of them. He's averaging about 12 yards per catch. So he can fill that role. He's done it for most of this year anyway. We just think of him more as a splashy player, especially after last week when he had the splashy touchdown. Uh, it was an underthrown ball from Purdy, but never mind that fact. In the, his past two games without Debo, He's seen at least a 20% target share, and he saw a 20% target share last week after Debo left. Now, that doesn't mean that it's going to be 10 targets because we've already talked about how Purdy won't throw that much. So I, I, I think maybe if you look at him and say, okay, six or seven targets, he'll catch most of them. He's got a chance to make a play after the catch against the Seattle defense that's allowed a lot of yak. You talked about that, Adam. Yeah, uh, I think you said that they're second of worst per catch. In the league. On yeah. yards yeah. after catch per reception. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I'm I'm okay starting him as a flex. I I will just say that like six or seven targets and a twenty percent target share means thirty to thirty five passes for Brock Purdy. And and I don't think that he's going to throw the ball that much. You don't think he's going to get six to seven targets though? I I don't. Right. Well, if he, he throws, throws thirty passes, passes, right. Heath's right. If he's throwing 30 passes, I know I get the math, but like you don't think you just don't think Ayuk's going to get six targets, six, seven targets. Not asking for much. He could get six. He he has what three and five in the last two games. Uh, yeah. So last didn't they kind of take everybody out last week? Last week, yeah. Yep. He he had nine targets against Miami two weeks ago, and three targets against the Bucks. Unless I'm wrong about that. No, No, you're right. He had eight. No, it, All right, it, I, I, let's, let's move on. Let me ask. Let's wrap up on Ayuk here. Would you have Ayuk or Barkley, Knight? Uh, All those running backs we talked about. I might start him over Montgomery. Might start him over Knight too. 
Okay. Uh, George Kittle. What do you think? His name's George Kittle, and he plays tight end, and you start him. Probably. Amazing matchup here. They give up the yep. second most points to tight ends. What was his target share last week? He had three targets. No, no, no. He had three targets against the Dolphins. He had five targets against the Bucks. <clears throat> but he, he has more than 40 yards in, I think, three games this year. Four games. He's had four good games all year. It's wild. Mm-hmm. One of them is against Arizona four weeks ago. They're the worst against tight ends. Seattle's second worst. He didn't, he didn't face play them. against Seattle either earlier this right. year. Right, he was hurt. Oh, man. So Kittle or um, Ingram? Kittle. I have Ingram higher in PPR. Kittle or Najoku? Kittle. Najoku. If Waller plays, if we find out Waller's going to play, would you start Waller or Kittle? Kittle. Kittle. All right. And that's the end of that chapter. San Francisco's DST is worth starting their top seven for everybody. Na, 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 na. Thursday Night Football. Get excited.